thank you for coming today. Of course. This is um, Noel from IMG. Yes. Now, how old are you? I'm 20. And how long have you been a model for? Um, about three years. Okay. Where are you from? I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Oh, wow, you're American. Yes. I thought you were some exotic European. Really? No, a lot of people think that. It's so funny. But wow. All American. <laughs> but then from maybe Scandinavian, European stock? Yeah, European. Where do you think? And Native American, actually. Oh, wow, yeah, I My can see that. My grandparents were Native American. That's so fantastic. Yeah, it's cool. Wow. People don't On which side? That. My mom's and dad's actually both had Native American descent, but mostly my mom's. That's amazing. I can really see it, sort of. Really? Yeah. So you look like what a model looks like to me. Really? If I saw you walking down the street, I would say, there goes a model. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> um, have you felt like that all your life? Have you been sort of seen in that light? Um, I don't think so. Like in high school and everything, I was the awkward girl. Really? Super tall and skinny and awkward. Like all the guys, I was taller than all the guys and they always liked the shorter girls. And I was just like, That's... people called me walking stick. <laughs> they called you walking yeah. stick. Um, it That's wasn't until sick. Yeah, I got brought into modeling that I realized that it was a beautiful thing. I always felt awkward about being so tall and skinny. I never thought of it as a good thing. Wow. But you were a pretty kid. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. So what did you want to do when you were a child growing up? I what were your dreams? I wanted to be a plastic surgeon, which is so weird That's now. Amazing. <laughs> That's amazing. <laughs> That's crazy. How did you get that idea? I really don't know. I have no idea, but I was so set on it. I always told my parents I'm going to be a plastic surgeon. <laughs> That's wild. Yeah. And how did you get scouted? It must have been very obvious then um, at some point. I was point. scouted actually on Facebook. Um, my sister and I, by Fort Chicago, they asked us to come into the office for mm -hmm. like a meeting to meet us in person, and we went in and they signed us, both of us. How, what's um, the age difference day, between? We're a year and a half apart. And you're the older sister? Mm -hmm. Okay. And she's not doing it anymore. She goes to nursing really? school now. Yeah. Okay. But so you had a sort of medical, <laughs> yeah. shared medical ambition. <laughs> exactly. That's funny. So why didn't she continue? Um, she just has a different kind of personality and it it wasn't for her. She's very meek and sweet and shy. And, and you're not? Um, you're more outgoing? Yeah, I think I'm I'm also very chill, but I'm more outgoing and <laughs> like tough. I can handle criticism and tough situations. Wow. What's your zodiac sign? I'm a Libra. Okay, that's my that's second Libra. Really? I'm sort of doing a tally <laughs> uh -huh. as we go. Wow. So Tell me the story. So you got you got you got scouted, mm -hmm. and then did it happen very quickly after that? It did. Yeah, I got scouted. I was still in high school, and a few months later, I remember I was in English class, and my phone just kept ringing and kept ringing, and it was my mom. And I was like, okay, she knows I'm in school. Why she keep calling me? So I went to the bathroom and. She's like, sweetie, like, the Chicago office just called me and, like, the New York wants you to, like, go there and move to New York. And she was like, how do you feel? And I remember I just started crying. And I was like... Oh, tears of joy. Yeah. I was just so happy. You weren't enjoying that English class? <laughs> no, no. You wanted out. Yeah. But it was a tough choice because I was playing sports and had my life and my friends. Mm. And it was hard to decide if I wanted to leave all of that. But What sports were you? Soccer. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, okay. Did you love it? Or? Yeah, I enjoyed it, but um, I mean, I felt like this was a once in a lifetime opportunity. So, sure. Um, I went, my mom came with me, and I visited for like a week and a half. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I decided to move back. And did you go to a model apartment? Mm -hmm, I did. I started in a model's apartment. Um, 
I actually had a really good experience. We had a nice apartment, and that's good. I was great friends with all the girls. We had a lot of fun, and it wasn't horrible like anyone says. But because I've had a, a couple of stories that were yeah. unpleasant. Yeah. That the girls weren't particularly friendly. Yeah. I, with one another, I and actually had a good experience. That's great for me. Yeah. So did you make a transition from that to your own apartment now? Yeah. And does that did that come with hard earned cash? It did. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All my own money, yes. So when did did you start working immediately? Um yeah, I mean not consistently, but I was working like, you know, good stuff here and there. Mm -hmm. And then it just, you know, developed into more consistent work. And so do you feel like a model now? I mean, if you, you're resigned to the yeah. fact that that is your job. To I the, am, yes. I, I feel like a model now. <laughs> do you think you'll make as much money modeling as you would have as a plastic surgeon? <laughs> That's an <laughs> That's interesting that, question, that is isn't it? an interesting question. Because those guys make a fortune. They do. Girls. Well, I guess we'll just have to find out. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. So do you love New York? I do. I love it. It's so different from where I grew up, but it's it's really nice. Did you grow up in a small town? Um, or it's not really small. The population's like 300,000, so mm -hmm. it's not small, small, but of course it's not like New York. And mm. um, I think just the people are different, you mm -hmm. know, like Midwestern people are very, very nice, but very close-minded too. Mm -hmm. um, and something like this would, I don't feel like I would ever have been exposed to it if I wasn't right. scouted, you know? Sure, absolutely. Isn't something people think about there. I would have never thought like, oh, I'm going to go to New York and be a model. Would you have stayed local, do you think? Or um, do you think you might have traveled abroad out of your circle? I don't circle? think I would have stayed local. I think I would have you would traveled have. somewhere still. And have you worked abroad yet? Yes. Where have you been? Um, London, Milan, Paris, you know, like tropical places. Oh, yes, of course. Do you do swimwear and all that kind of stuff? Because um, I do a little bit of it. Um, uh -huh. I'll do like some stuff for free people, mm -hmm. like swimwear for them. Um, what do you want to do? Are you ambitious? I am. I think. Uh, well, it's tough because what I want to do kind of contradicts itself. I like to do high fashion, like I like to do the shows and everything like that. But I, I also want to do Victoria's Secret. I think that's one of uh, my yeah. main goals. So you want so the it's fame, like super commercial, yeah. but also the high fame, fashion. the money. You want it all, basically. You want, I the, want it all, the yes. credibility of high fashion exactly. with the cash of of that. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's great. Well, I, there's no reason why you can't have it all. Yeah. Um, Is there a favorite cool. magazine or photographer that you would want to work with tomorrow? Mm. In your mind? In my mind. Or is it just really waiting for the Victoria's Secret call contract? No, I mean, of course, that's my main goal, but I, there are so many magazines and photographers that I would mm -hmm. love to work with. Mm -hmm. um, well, are you aware of all of that stuff? Have yeah, you? I am, yeah. So was that, was that education um, something you got after you joined. Yeah, definitely. So you didn't know anything about anything before then? No, I didn't. Okay, but you've sort of yeah. educated yourself. Yeah, I've just done my research and, you know, saw what other girls are shooting, who mm -hmm. I'm shooting with, looked at all the photographers' work, you know, the magazines, the models. Mm -hmm. And online, how's that? Do you have a Instagram account? I do, I have an Instagram. That's my only social media, but... It's your only social media? Yeah. But you're focusing on that one? I am. I okay. focus on it. I try is to that keep some, up with it. Is that something you have to do every day or? Yeah. I mean, they suggest posting at least once or twice a day, mm -hmm. which I don't always do, but mm -hmm. I, I try to. So do you see that as part of the job and a sort of uh, necessary chore? I do, yeah. Yeah. I, I see it as it's very important now. A mm -hmm. lot of clients look at that and... And like your following has a lot to do with some jobs you book now. Um, so yeah, I look at it as a job. Like if I'm shooting somewhere, I feel like I need to take a behind the scenes and be mm -hmm. like, hey guys, shooting this. 
or you know post my new work on there and what about relationships um, is I that have a boyfriend. you have a boyfriend mm -hmm. did you have a boyfriend back at home? home no I didn't you didn't no well I I like I dated a guy for a little bit actually mm. but I was so young I wouldn't consider it like mm. a real relationship okay. you know it's okay like yeah. high school right dating yeah I feel like my boyfriend now is probably my first real love like grown up relationship yeah my first love oh that's great and he understands what the job entails he does he's very very cool about it and he will travel with me just mm -hmm. for support and oh wow okay so he's helping me and, and he has the means to do so yeah he, that's good he um he manages a company so he can kind of work from his phone and travel okay. and it makes it easy does um, he enjoy being on shoots and stuff he doesn't really go on shoots with me he'll he'll travel with me um, just to Generally. different cities, yes, yeah. I see, so I we see. can hang out whenever I'm finished or stuff like that. But he won't go to shoot. Right, exactly. That right, right. Fair enough. But yeah, he's very supportive. That's so good. So what are you wearing? Is this your <laughs> daily outfit kind <laughs> of thing? It is. Yeah, I always like to wear like these are uh, read on. They're Levi's. Um, it's like this brand, they take old vintage Levi's and reconstruct them into like new fits. Cool. Um, so I have so many jeans from them, I love them. Wow. I love you them. like the the slim fit mm -hmm. I do. I style. have some flair and some skin. Oh yeah, there's a bit of flair. Yeah, but I love these jeans. I think they look great with anything. What do they retail for? Are they a bit more expensive? They are. Because of the vintage denim. Yeah, they retail for like 150 to 200. Okay. Cool. And then you got a bomber jacket, an MA style bomber jacket. Yes, a bomber that, that jacket. We all grew up wearing, my generation in England. <laughs> really? That's we were so the funny. sort of, maybe the second wave to wear them. Uh -huh. The first wave might have been sort of punk and skinheads. Yeah. That's so um, interesting. Punk after skinhead. Probably skinheads were the very first, <laughs> and, and rude boys, sort of scar, yeah. punky. Uh, sort of youth culture mm -hmm. in I feel England. like everything just comes back around. Like it does. These jeans, my mom was like, that's what I wore when I was a teenager. Like, sure. You guys like this. That's nice. And who makes this? The Bomber. Yes. Misguided. Okay. So like a UK brand, but they have really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And that colorful t-shirt, is, then, a t -shirt? is yes. that a vintage t-shirt? <laughs> yep, it is. That's cool. ACDC. Oh, it's wow. It's actually my boyfriend's, he has like tons of vintage t-shirts and tank tops and I'll like That's take cool. some of them and cut them up and wear them. Wicked. And, and my mom had a lot from like concerts she went to and I have a lot of That's fantastic. Too. So um, no overcoat today even though it's quite cold. No, no overcoat And today. you're not cold. I was a bit unprepared. No, I'm not cold. You're good. I'm actually fine, yeah. So Noel, I was wondering what um, you think are the qualities that make for a good model? Hmm, that's good. I think you have to be very hardworking, mm -hmm. um, open-minded. I think you have to be able to take constructive criticism and not take it personally. Um, I think you, you definitely can't be too sensitive. I feel like you have to have kind of a hard shell and mm -hmm. um, just not take things personally because it is all about us, but it's also... A business and you know you never know what a client's looking for they're looking for a certain look or a certain vibe and I feel like you just can't take it personally if it's not you, you know? mm -hmm. and what makes you a good model particularly what are the qualities that you bring to a to a shoot to a sitting um, I think I'm very hard-working and focused and I think I'm just kind like I think it's just mm. nice to work with people who are nice mm. and, and you enjoy yeah. you enjoy the job itself I do, yeah I, I enjoy it very much I have so much fun when I'm shooting mm -hmm. um, yeah I just I like my job and I enjoyed doing it mm -hmm. <laughs> oh yes I wanted to ask you if there were any questions that you had for a photographer mm. now that you've and rarely get this opportunity. Yeah. Are there any things you've ever wondered about?
that you couldn't possibly know without sitting here now and asking a photographer what it's like on the other side? Yeah, I mean, hmm. That's a really good question. What is it like for you guys, you know, um, working with models all the time? Do you have bad experiences or is it for the most part good? Like are girls rude and hmm. hard to work with or do you have a pretty positive experience usually? I think exactly like you said. Mm -hmm. I think your experience is determined by the attitude, attitude that you bring. Yeah. And if you really love what you do, and if you really love models, mm -hmm. if you really want to share in that love and appreciation of beauty and fashion yeah. and life and energy, mm -hmm. then you're always looking for the positive and the beautiful yeah. and the kind in the person when they first make themselves apparent to you, you know, even when they come through the door, yeah. the first impressions are important. Mm. And then you're responding ultimately as a fashion photographer to the job at hand as well, which is a particular idea and a particular girl to go with that idea to embody and give life to that idea. Mm. So that ties into your idea of not taking it personally because yeah. you can't possibly know any of that. Yeah. Um, I think it is possible to have bad experiences. Um, meeting the model beforehand mitigates that, mm -hmm. stops that from happening, because at least you, you know what they look like. Yeah. And you have a sense that they're going to look good in the clothes, mm -hmm. and you're going to like them and get on, and that they sort of have the, the re requisite qualities that you're looking for. Yeah. Um, but it is funny, because sometimes photography and the process of actually taking the picture is different. And I think I mentioned this in the past, but I always find it strange in a way, and then not, that once the, the, the picture is ready to go, mm -hmm. that the model ceases to be herself somehow. And all of the life and energy and uniqueness of who you are and how you, how you move and how you act sort of goes away because now we're focused on the job at hand. Yeah. And I think great models can have that balance between doing, giving the picture, giving the client, giving the, the job itself what is required, mm -hmm. but also bringing of themselves totally. So there yeah. isn't that, there isn't a demarcation. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they are themselves to the maximum, but channeling that energy or focus, as you said, into delivering the, 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 the final result, the end result, which is the picture that says it all. Yeah. Um, and a photographer can help a model uh, achieve that. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it always helps if you sit down at the beginning of the shoot to discuss what the idea is. Yeah, and I've, I've heard models say that sometimes whatever mood boards and means of communication that the editor and the photographer have shared aren't necessarily carried over to the model, which I thought was quite strange, because oh, yeah. you're the person who needs mm -hmm. to understand, in a, in a way, even deeper, yeah. because you have to be it and create it. Totally. You're creating it and yeah. being it. Uh, and it helps if you have a, a point of departure. Mm -hmm. um, so with younger models and inexperienced models, you always have the you can always have the situation that they don't feel confident enough to, to be able to get out of themselves. Um, and I once had a, a negative experience where the model said, I don't want to be looked at. What? <laughs> uh, referring to the crew, yeah. that she wanted the crew to leave. Yeah. But ultimately, she was very mistaken. Mm -hmm. um, uh, about what's required because the job itself and the job description and title is someone who is looked at. Yeah. It is the very essence of what it's all about. Yes. Um, so there's that. There's being looked at and being comfortable in yourself to be good with that. Mm -hmm. Liking yourself enough yeah. not to be self-conscious in that. And then, like a great actor, being able to have the courage almost to be able to then leave yourself behind mm -hmm. and um, 
and become something else yeah. in the pursuit of playing the role. Mm -hmm. So I think that's really important, not having an ego enough to, to worry that you're looking stupid or silly yeah, or I think that's very not important. how you imagine it to be or what you think is good or bad or cool, just to be in the moment and to, as I always say, simply give. Yeah. It's that willingness to give of yourself, which is number one requirement. Yeah. Um, and then all else follows from that, because if you're a giver by nature, <laughs> everything happens. Yeah, everything uh, just falls into place. You're in, it's all in honor of that initial spirit of giving. Yeah, absolutely. And then you're giving to the photographer and you get back in return. You know, the law of reciprocity mm -hmm. is the energy out equals energy in. Definitely. So it all makes for a great creative experience yeah. and moment. I agree with that completely. Yeah. So that's always my advice to young models. Uh, who might not have ever been told that, that it's about giving. And therefore, they, they, if, they, you, if they only knew, mm -hmm. they'd at least be able to think about it and think about whether they can do that. Yeah. But letting, being able to let go of yourself, not take things too seriously, to be able to play, but to be serious, to be focused, and yet to be loose. Yeah, it's it's like lot. life, but it's <laughs> like living every moment. We're all playing a role. Yeah, absolutely. There's always politics involved between people. There's always energy that has to be negotiated. Mm -hmm. um, have you had good and bad experiences? And if so, what were they? I have. I, I have good experiences for the most part. Mm -hmm. I'm very happy with how good everything has gone. I mm -hmm. rarely deal with negative or rude people that are hard to work with, but occasionally there is, you know, a photographer or someone else on the team who maybe they're just having a bad day or they have a bad attitude, but, you know, it's, like, really hard to work with people where you feel, like, a negative energy. Mm -hmm. And like you said, um, a lot of times there will be a very specific thing the client's wanting, and the photographer's kind of aware of it, and maybe they have a mood board set up, but it's not really explained to you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I've been on shoots where the photographer will explain what they want, and I'll, I'll give exactly that. And then the client's like, oh, but actually we want this. And maybe it's things that totally contradict each other. Totally. Like, we want you to be very beautiful and feminine. And then it's like, well, can you, like, a little bit grungy with and it. And tougher. Yeah, and right. it's like, it's confusing to me when they're not exactly sure what they want and mm -hmm. maybe the idea isn't related to us like uh, in the right way because it's it's confusing when you're not sure, sure. what they want. Um, and that's a thing for me, but I always just try and give a little bit of both and mm -hmm. see what works. But and the person with a negative attitude, can they, are they from the crew? Yeah. Generally, <laughs> are they generally the hairstylist? Yeah, yeah, usually. <laughs> the temperamental or sometimes hairstylist. Sometimes there will be, you know, negative energy between two people. Like I've been on a shoot where the photographer and like another crew member were having mm -hmm. like an argument throughout mm -hmm. the day, and it brought like tension to the whole set. Absolutely, and it made me feel very uncomfortable. Yes, like, things like that. Right. You just can't control, and you just have to do your best to sure. block out everything that's going around and just give the photo. And what was a high for you so far? What has been the peak moment, if um, looking back, that you'll cherish? If it all happened, had to end tomorrow, Yeah. what do you think is the... Oh. Either one shoot or yeah, there's, a period of time or whatever it might be. There's so many shoots that I've been very happy with, but I think something that was really great for me is um, this last fashion week, I had like a very successful season, which I haven't done before. So that was like a really cool moment for me. Um, and I felt really happy with like how everything went because I feel like for the most part, I do a lot of shoots that I'm happy with and um, things like that, but I've never had a successful fashion week season. So Oh, great. Congratulations. That's, that's the that first. That's great for me. Yeah, thank you. So did, did it involve all the various territories? Mm -hmm. You did Paris and Milan and everywhere? I did, yes. Um, and did you walk some great shows? I did, yeah. Um, and you, you didn't have a favorite? 
Um, I think my favorite was Ellie Saab. I got to open Ellie Saab. Oh, that wicked. Was very exciting. That's fantastic. It's also the first show I've ever opened. So I think that was kind of a surreal moment for That's me. That's amazing. So was it um, nerve wracking in any way? Um, or you just felt in a excited? way, but I just felt excited. Yeah. yeah, in the moment, I was just like, "This is what I've wanted. I'm excited." Wow. Let like, me well. say that that's the that's the peak. <laughs> yeah. Experience then so far, yeah. opening a show for yeah. a major designer during that was Fashion Week. Something huge for me. That's fantastic. Well, long may it continue. Yes. And um, I'm really impressed by your attitude. Oh, thank you. I think it'll all happen very very naturally now as it as it started so may it continue yes hopefully so thank you so much thank for coming you. and talking to me today